I actually kind of despise the uh, the amount of fucking time we have to now spend devoted to talking about Elon Musk. Devoted to giving time, energy, and attention to the rich boy billionaire who bought Twitter and turned it into his little private right-wing hug box. As far as I'm concerned, not an impressive dude, not a dude worth talking about constantly, but always in the news, always fascinating. One thing you can say about Elon Musk is he does seem to hold some fascination for the people. So who am I to deny the people their, their Musk fix? So I wanna tell you before we talk about anything else, I was kicked off of two Twitter accounts. I was kicked off of one for saying the word gringo, I was kicked off of the other for criticizing Elon Musk on four separate occasions until I eventually had too many Musk criticisms and I was banned from the platform. I, I've been banned from Twitter on both accounts and I have not been back on Twitter other than when I'm doing research for one of these videos. I will hop on Twitter then and look around for some stuff, uh, you know, and you know, usually I'll find a few things, but um, I don't go on Twitter on, the, on a daily basis anymore like I used to. I don't doom scroll through Twitter looking for stuff to get mad at. And I have to say, by and large, the quality of my life has improved. What's Elon Musk up to lately? Beside, oh, so he's liking tweets now from our favorite stochastic terrorist, Libs O TikTok. Posting publicly available videos isn't harmful, hateful, or dangerous, which is pretty ironic given that Elon Musk suspended the Elon Jet account not too long ago. Uh, you know it is harmful though, confusing kids about their identity, stealing childhood innocence, exposing kids to adult sexual entertainment, giving kids porn in school, and sterilizing and mutilating kids. Well, basically none of that is happening, so what the fuck are you talking about, you raving lunatic? And I love how all of these really nefarious things are tethered seamlessly to confusing kids, quote unquote, about their identity. So basically, allowing a safe space for trans kids is equivalent to stealing their innocence, exposing them to adult sexual entertainment, giving them porn, and sterilizing them and mutilating them. So that's the equivocation that's being drawn here. And it has no basis or bearing on reality whatsoever. And yet, the world's foremost dipshit billionaire who owns one of the largest social media companies on the face of the earth has seen fit to throw in with this bitch. And uh, let's not forget that this is a guy who had a trans kid that has disowned his ass and forsaken his name. And he also had a wife who was uh, taken from him by a trans woman who I guess is better in bed and in every other way than he is. I wonder if that sort of uh, personal grudge has anything to do with this attitude he has towards trans people. Maybe, maybe. So this is a crazed rant by a Russian government official. And at the conclusion of the rant, Elon Musk is gonna chime in and say, epic thread. So let's listen to everything that this Russian government official is going to lay out for us. On New Year's Eve, everybody's into making predictions. Many come up with a futuristic hypothesis as if computing to single out some the wildest and even most absurd ones. Here's our humble contribution. What can happen in 2023? Oil prices will rise to $150 a barrel and gas will top $5 per one point. 000, 000 cubic meters. The UK will in, will rejoin the EU. The EU will collapse after the UK's return. Euro, Euro will drop out of use as the former EU currency. Poland and Hungary will occupy western regions of the formerly existing Ukraine. The Fourth Reich will be created, encompassing the territory of Germany and its satellites of Poland, the Baltic states, Czechia, Slovakia, the Kiev Republic, and other outcasts. War will break out between France and the Fourth Reich. Europe will be divided. Poland repartitioned uh, re in the process. Northern Ireland will separate from the UK and uh, join the Republic of Ireland. Civil war will break out in the US. Uh, California and Texas becoming independent states as a result. Texas and Mexico will form an allied state. Elon Musk will win the presidential election in a number of states, which after the new civil wars end will have been given to the GOP. All the largest stock markets and financial activity will leave the US and Europe and move to Asia. The Bretton Woods uh, system of monetary management will collapse, leading to the IMF and the World Bank crash. 
Euro and dollar will stop circulating as the global reserve currencies. Digital fiat currency will be actively used instead. Seasons greetings to you all, Anglo-Saxon friends, and uh, they're happily oinking piglets. So I don't know if this guy is like trying to be funny. I don't know if this guy is trying to make a joke here. I don't know if this is like a legitimate threat of predictions or if he's making some sort of point about the far-fetched nature of predictions, but a few of these predictions maybe could happen, but uh, around the time you get to the UK rejoining the EU and the Fourth Reich forming and all this stuff, it becomes pretty much an unlikelihood. And yet, uh, here is Elon Musk to massively signal boost it. This dude hit a crack pipe before writing this shit. And now Elon Musk is like, ah, yes, your crack-fueled delusions make a good point, Dimitri. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping this is a joke. And I feel like it has the tone of one. But these days, who the fuck knows who's joking anymore, right? I really love Neil deGrasse Tyson. I loved his uh, version of Cosmos. I've seen him do so many scientific education uh, things that I appreciated. I think that uh, the way he uh, schooled Ben Shapiro on trans uh, rights, trans identity, was uh, was nice to see some pushback on that program. Um, I've liked him when I've seen him do interviews. I listen to his podcast, Star Talk, every now and then. I love hearing him talk about the things he knows a lot about. But I really fucking hate this Elon Musk simp side of Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he says things like, while casting shade on Elon Musk for what he's done, is doing, or will do, try to pause... And remember that he made electric cars a normal thing in society. And he commercialized space for cargo, satellites, and people. Count him among those who are inventing civilization's future. No. I refuse to do that, uh, Neil. The reason I refuse to do that is because all of those things were going to happen anyway. Yeah, I'm not going to count him among those who are inventing civilization's future. I'm going to count him among those who are exploiting it for financial gain. Because his ass certainly doesn't understand jack shit about the electric car or satellites or fucking rockets or any of these things. He hires people who know what the fuck they're doing to do these things and brief him on them. And then he goes around pretending to know it and probably in his heart of hearts believing he knows it. But he doesn't actually know it. I saw a guy the other day uh, who was a programmer was a coder who said, uh, you know, when people went around telling me about how Elon Musk knew his shit when it came to electric cars, I believed them because I didn't know shit about electric cars. And people went around saying he knew his shit about robotics or AI. I didn't know shit about those topics, so I accepted them at their word. But now I do know about programming. And now that his ass is talking about programming, I have to say he's a fucking moron. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So I'm never going to buy a car that this motherfucker was involved in because he doesn't actually know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's where we are. And I'm not saying that he's not part of the process. I'm not saying that there, there's never been any sort of entrepreneurial spirit demonstrated by Elon Musk. He might be, in some ways, a brilliant manager. Maybe some, I mean, something he does might contribute in some way to the facilitation of the, the technologies that are created by people working for him. I'm not going to deny that he might not play some role. But here's the thing. He is not the mastermind. He's the money man. He's the guy who shows up and says, hey, if you make some really impressive stuff, I'll give you some money. Not enough to really compensate you for the nature of what you're creating for me, but I'm the motherfucker that actually understands the value of it enough to pay you for it, so that's what I've got. That's what I bring to this equation. And you know what? As far as that goes, as far as being the money man for a few ventures goes, maybe he made some wise choices in that regard. But beyond that, he doesn't know as much as he fucking claims to, and the real experts are the people who work under him and the, who's creations he takes credit for he's much more like a thomas edison than he is like a nikola tesla uh he is the guy that would fuck tesla over and in fact if you look at uh, what he's done to tesla which we will in a moment 
he has kind of fucked that Tesla over, the corporate entity of Tesla over as well. Twitter removes suicide prevention feature, says it's under revamp. Okay, if you have a feature on your platform that's designed to prevent people from killing themselves and you're deciding I'm going to revamp this feature, don't you keep the current version of it running while you do that revamp? If you were to upgrade any other piece of fucking technology and features went away while you were working on the new features, that would be horrible, right? Like if you were, if you downloaded an app and that you needed for to do a specific task and all of a sudden it stopped doing that task, but then they're like, oh, well, we're working on a new version of that. It's like, okay, well, work on it in the background. And until then, until you figure that out, leave me with what I got. I mean, YouTube has rolled out some shitty updates and upgrades and shit, but at least they fucking didn't take away shit in the meantime. Like, sometimes YouTube will change how you do something in a way that makes no fucking sense to me, but at least they don't take it away while they're working on the new replacement. And in this instance, what we're talking about is not just some, like, eh, whatever feature. It's literally like, hey, people are displaying suicidal behavior on your platform. Maybe the platform should have some sort of innate response to that so that we can save fucking lives of people who might be suicidally depressed. And Elon Musk sees that and says, eh, nah, get rid of that. We'll build a new one later. It's like, no, keep the one you have now, build a new one in the background, and don't get rid of the one you have until you've developed something new and hopefully better. Twitter having suicide prevention is like McDonald's having diabetes prevention. Well, I get what you're saying. So on one level, yeah, it doesn't really make sense because it's McDonald's, and of course they're giving you diabetes. So them telling you about diabetes prevention Maybe on some level is like, eh, I don't know about that. But on another level, it's like, who needs it more than the average McDonald's customer? And just like, and who needs suicide prevention more than the average Twitter user? Because certainly Twitter gives you a lot of reasons to want to commit suicide and not too many reasons not to. Twitter isn't responsible for keeping you from killing yourself. Um, I'm not saying it's responsible for it, but don't you think that makes sense? Like, if you ran a giant social media company and there was a massive problem with users like posting suicidal material on there and then killing themselves, wouldn't you think that it would be your purview to address that in some way, shape, or form? I don't know. I mean, it seems like it kind of is to me, but uh, I don't know. You're, you can have your own standards, I guess. As all this has been going on, Tesla stock has uh, plummeted 70 fucking percent. Oh my goodness gracious me. In a year under the leadership or lack thereof, of its uh, <laughs> commander-in-chief, Elon Musk. And that's why a lot of the shareholders at this point really want Elon Musk to step down because they're just kind of like, hey, um, you're not really a good leader. You're not really a good CEO. You're not doing a good job. You're actually not too great at this whole capitalism thing. The, your one claim to fame, the one thing we all thought you were good at, it doesn't even seem like you're all that good at that, buddy.